Okay, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start putting in the intermediate clutch. I finished uh, going ahead and torquing everything together uh, on the back half, so everything's turning kosher, turning as a unit. You should be able to grab both these splines with your hand and turn the whole unit. So we're gonna go ahead, put in our three disc clutch. I'm using a Borg Warner here. Sometimes there's a wavy on the bottom. Some people say to leave the wavy in. Some people omit it for a flat 100,000 steel. Uh, in this case, I'm gonna omit the wavy because it's for my favorite customer. So we're gonna see if I can put this in like this. Usually I have this sitting up, so. I'm doing it like this so you can get an idea of what it looks like. Which makes it a little more of a pain. Come on now. Cooperate with me. If I'd be smart, I'd have a GoPro on my head. And then just stare down at it. Of course, then it would be going everywhere, and you guys would probably get dizzy and turn off the video. Here's the backing plate. Now, this is when you know you got everything together right. This is the thicker square cut ring. Now, you can put in an oversized ring out of a 727. Some of your shift kits come with a thicker uh, retaining ring for this intermediate backing plate. Uh, I'm reusing the stock stuff for what I'm doing here. Uh, should be just fine. And we're in there. Some people say there's going to be like a one inch, one and a half inch gap. You guys can kind of see it. Some people say it'll leave the gap over in the frets. I don't think it matters in this application. In some of your aftermarket applications, see if I can zoom in there so you guys get an idea. Give it a flashlight so you can see. All right. See right here, where this is what I'm talking about. I've got my gap and my ring. See where the see where the gap and the ring is right here. Some people say to put it down here in the frets, right in here. Uh, and then some of your aftermarket that doesn't, uh, you just have like a full manual automatic. You can knock this pin out for your low two band and put in an aluminum brace right here to help hold this. Because on some extreme applications for second gear shift, it will snap this intermediate uh, backing plate. For what we're doing here, we don't have to worry about it. Stock will work. We got our low two band right here. It's going to go in like this. By the way, all these clutches have been soaked for a minimum of 10 minutes, including the bands. Never put them together dry. So what I'm going to do next, which unfortunately I cannot do this sideways, we have our direct drum right here. Got everything prepped, ready to go. I'm going to put some trans gel in here. We're going to turn this vertical. And what we're going to do is take a screwdriver and spin this to align this drum down through the intermediate clutch as it engages the ceiling rings on the center support. It all has to go together at the same time. And a little trick you can do, which I've found, and I'm going to make this. The little trick you can do. is you can take the three disc clutch through the intermediate and kind of line the frets up in here 
so you don't have to spend so long fighting the direct drum to align it. You can just kind of get all the uh, nubs on the three clutch discs for the intermediate to kind of line up. jam in there. Gel rather. And we're gonna go and what we're gonna do see if I can do this here. What we're doing here is we're gonna turn turn it like this to get the clutches to engage. And you'll have to do this two or three times. Sometimes I fight this for 15 minutes, sometimes it drops right in. And what you can do to kind of aid that along, trying to get this pain in the butt to uh, line up, you can hit the intermediate clutch to, to kind of help jar them clutches around to try and get it to engage. So we'll just, I'll let the camera run and you can listen to me swear at it. Play with the disc a little more. One. There's two and three. Now you know you get it in all the way when you can hit the intermediate clutch with air and the direct drum doesn't bounce. At this point you can hit air on your direct clutch and check for it, check its function. Clutch works, intermediate works, low two band is in there freely, it's not bound up on the drum either, everything's spinning, we're going together good. Now, we might as well go ahead and put in the front pump and uh, the forward drum. This is marginally easier. That's the biggest pain in the ass in the whole job is what we just did there. So we've got the pump all prepped. We've got our forward drum already prepped like so. Everything's spinning good, bushings are good. It'll be the third port from the right on the bottom of your control passages down here is what fires off the forward. Okay, that one's gonna work. Make sure you glue in this thrust washer that goes in between the forward and a direct. By glue, I mean use trans gel. Don't actually glue it. Uh, and we're going to go ahead. Let's see here. I'm going to see if I can get the right angle here. My thing. You can kind of see in there. 
So what we're going to do, we're just going to take a pair of channel locks and find it. Well, what you can do, if you start really having a hell of a time with this, you can lock it in park. And then that stops the whole works. I think I'm already home. And you can feel down on the side and feel them drums just bare, they, they wiggle it around that should be barely touching. You should be, oh, hell, I can give you a measurement. From the face that, from the face of uh, the surface that mates the drum, it's uh, about inch and five eighths down. A lot of times I eyeball putting this in, but I'm going to leave it like this angle so you guys have an idea what, what I'm doing. We're going to go ahead and put in a pump gasket. I like to use alignment dolls, cheap insurance. Now notice this case has eight bolt holes. I'm only going to put in six on the pump. That's all you need for this application. If I was going to do like a demo trans or a, a hardcore uh, build, I'd probably drill out the pump and do all eight bolt holes. You've seen some of my other videos. So, then we're going to go ahead and get gel all over everything else here. This is another one of them spots where people have a bad habit of over torquing these bolts and then this turns into a big pain in the ass because then you got to get in here and put in heel coils. It's all mounted straight. You should be able to just be able to spin them dolls right out. Bolts have ceiling washers. I've already put them on. Sometimes they're a larger uh, 9 16 headed uh, bolt, even though it's only a 5 16 thread, and it'll have an O ring on it. A lot of your later models had that. foot pounds again. Don't push it if you think you if it's you can just if you think it's it's starting to spin the threads out, stop. Because you are compressing the gasket. This one's being a pain. And you're, you're seating against an outer o ring and everything else. Well, that one. I bet you that's when I got a helicoil. Nope. Nope. She's going to go. So we got. One, two, three, four, five, six, 
These two seal your oil passages. This is your cooler passages. These two are uh, for uh, to pull out a sump. Your extra ones would be right here and right up here in no man's land. Now it's not unusual. I just dropped. Now it's not unusual for this to. You won't be able to turn this without this. Yep, we've got end play. We're good to go. Now, to check end play, we're going to To do end play, you're going to push this way to shove the whole guts back. Then you're going to push your output shaft forward against the center support. You'll put a dial indicator on the end of this shaft and pull in and out to measure your end play. It should be between, I believe, three and nineteen thousandths. You can use a clamp-on dial indicator. Oh, I'm here. I'm not going to set this whole apparatus up right now. Basically, this is the one that works best. The clamp-on dial indicator from Harbor Freight. And you'll put her on the end, I'll put shaft like that. Zero it. And there you go. Alright. Yeah, I gotta reset right now, so uh, we're gonna put the valve body and the whole bottom end together next and uh, finish up this transmission. We're almost there.